So there's this very popular video going around at the moment, which quite rightly highlights this dismissive attitude, particularly in the Middle East and Asian regions, where women get this very short end of the stick when it comes to violence against women. Why work late and be independent? In fact, why work at all? That's what husbands are for. Fun fact, if he's your husband, it's not great. Women who wear skirts are the leading cause of rape. However, there is part of this video, which is a very widely seen message online, that from my seat is just so bloody stupid. All right, so what follows this is the most amazing thing. Uh, it's it's a rape apology, yeah? And, you know, the Thunderfoot fans all be like, No, you're just missing the point. Just trying to help people. Just trying to help. Explain. No. He's trying to say women should stop complaining so much about men's role in rape. Because there's things they can do with their body language. I shit you fucking not. And locking their doors. And... But he says he's not saying rape's okay, you just didn't listen. No, I listened too well. But it doesn't take good listening to see. This is amazing. This is what low wattage internet fame does to your brain. It fries your brain and makes you say things that are shocking to her. It'd be said in public, especially by someone that's a uh, member of the secular community. Free speech, but, you know, that free speech is just another way of saying you have a right to make an ass of yourself, so. And this is the sentiment that just because something is against the law, that you should under no circumstances take steps to reduce your risks. Now he's about to use the word straw man, referring to something else, but Thunderfoot, this is actually a straw man. Nobody that's saying teach boys not to rape which is shorthand for just be better educated on these issues, on these confusions we'll talk about in a second. Like, does flirtation mean somebody has consented to sex? Um, nobody that has that slogan is saying, do absolutely no safety of your own, women. You walk in those na dangerous neighborhoods, it is the responsibility of the criminals not to rape you. Nobody is saying that. But that's what you're fighting, that's a straw man. All right? Feminist organization hand out pamphlets that say, have a rape whistle, have mace, only travel in groups, da, 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 da. don't drink too much with people you are not don't really know. And They say those things, I've read them. <laughs> They're not saying don't do that when they say, teach boys better ethics about the situation. And you will go on to talk about Ted Bundy and then point out that, wait, 90% of people you know. Yeah, people you know. And the theme we'll use here is the robbery and should your house be locked. Well, one of the issues I think we're really discussing is should dressing less provocatively... I guess Thunderfoot is a little bit like a Muslim. He's not into the burqa, but dressing moderately is just to produce rape, ladies. I think I said moderately. Modestly. Like, you have to dress modestly. To, it's like locking your doors. Which is funny. I've lived in the country, too, and uh, I've lived a lot of places you don't have to lock your doors still. In such an environment. I mean, the largest straw man here is this idea that we don't teach our children not to rape. You see, Thunderfoot, what people put on signs is shortened. It's a short version. It's not the whole point. It's not the whole set of details. It's trying to be a, it's trying to be a summary of the point. Right. So they're not saying no one was ever told not to rape. But for example, people in your comments have actually said and denied and said and, and then denied anybody says other people say that and then there's somebody right next to them in a comment saying flirtation shows intent and you basically say that in your video. Flirtation shows intent. Of course people think you want to have sex when you flirt with them, which only makes sense if flirtation 
means intent to have sex, which, with the, which it doesn't. And let's forget about the fact that we're human beings and we can reproduce and play out a lot of things that um, are just part of the, the language of mankind, right? <clears throat> let's, let's assume that when there is a physical traction, attraction and there's a chance of sex and the flirting is for that. Still, everybody might get a little flirting because if when animals are courting, they just throw out their flirting radar. So you might get some of that. Guess what? Look at mammal courtship, scientist man. Do they have one suitor? No. They flew with, flirt with a bunch of suitors, and the suitors compete or fight or show feathers or whatever they do various ways. Well, very few feathers in the mammals, but you get the point. Often among mammals, there's a struggle, right, among the males, mixed uh, between actual fighting and some sort of displays. More than one suitor. You getting rejected is just a part of how nature works, okay? It's not to say, oh, this is the other thing that's really just like early in the video. Um, well, it won't be early in this one because I'm expanding the beginning out. I might let him speak uh, for longer as we get all the points and he just repeats them. Uh, but he's going to liken uh, wanting to rape people to being homosexual. It's just a preference. In a way... To say rape is not stoppable in that sense, to use the positivity of homosexuality. He's not trying to say the homosexuals are as bad as rapists. That's the funny thing. God, this guy. I'm telling you, low watt internet fame is dangerous. Bollocks. Yes, we do. Not only that, we teach them not to steal, not to murder, and to not do all sorts of other things. And yet, curiously, rape, murder, and theft still exist in society. See, he says that they, it, that they still exist. Well, the question is, can you lessen them? Could you make it less than 90% of rapes, when uh, less number of rapes when 90% of them are people that you know? Yeah, there might be a way. And that's not just locking your doors. You need to make, there are ways to educate people, especially with all the confusion in your comments, for example, about what even would constitute rape and how it works out and how likely a woman is to accuse rape just because she didn't like the sex. Like, it's a pretty big hassle. And a lot of people, shit comes back on you, even if it's a real legitimate claim. And if it isn't a legitimate claim, there'll be witnesses, and yeah, that's not as likely as you seem to think. And you say, but it still exists. Yeah, but we can lessen it th through teaching people simple facts that they are just ignorant of, like flirtation is, does not imply intent to have sex with you, and it's nowhere near consent. And if you end up the rejected suitor, that's just a part of life. If there's an equal number of male and females trying to pair up, then you get rejected in one contest, you could go to the next. And surprisingly, I think the problem is just that we're, we're such a sexually repressed society that men always, the, their attitude, their picture of it is, Always ready, always ready, always ready. So if a woman goes, in most mammals, you know, it comes and goes seasonally and even whether you have kids and just your health, everything comes and goes. If you go into this mode where you want courtship, then uh, you, you try more than once, right? And and that and and then it would that feeling goes away and you're not stressing out every time someone else walks by, ready for courtship and puts out their flirting radar and you go oh no thank you, but sexually repressed European descendants are like 
Oh my god. Opportunity's knocking. Opportunity knocks only once. Oh, I better, I gotta gin it up, gin it up. Hey, did I, yeah, I wanna have sex. Oh, I got rejected. Oh, yeah. Bitch. But it, flirting is like a radar. It's a courtship thing. Agreed. Fine. A humans can do it for other reasons, but um, we're funny like that. But, but even limiting it to the courtship reason, it's like, it's like a radar. It's supposed to be not everybody else is in courtship mode. Not every other male is supposed to be going through, you know, uh, their version of heat. So, yeah, men, teach, teach your men not to be do, in courtship mode 24-7 of their whole life. Probably the simplest way of explaining this concept is through an analogy. Did you just see that thing? So, uh, teach men not to rape. Well, teach men not to murder. How's that working out for you so far? Uh, pretty good. Here's the analogy for you. It used to be thought that dueling was not murder. And so we dueled. And now it counts as murder and or manslaughter. So you uh, you can teach people to change their attitude about what counts. So you know, it used to be getting a woman so drunk that she's, you know, stumbling, passing out in your room was just a kind of seduction. Okay, that's rape, we know now, better, because we're civilized. Ha ha ha. Put your hands up if you have a lock on your front door. Why do you do that? Why do you put a lock on your front door when theft is against the law? Yeah, why teach me to put a lock on my door? Why not teach your children not to steal? Okay, so it's obvious that he has, in fact, set the tone for this, and the tone is women should be told how to dress uh, in order to prevent rape. So I don't think so. I think that, that the mace and go traveling with people, um, because I just, uh, if I really thought it was a factor in rape, but I don't. I think walking alone somewhere where you're seen by rapists in the street or hanging out with frat boys uh, <clears throat> causes rape. And how you're dressed isn't a direct, you know, factor. So um, I also think people should be able to go nude and stuff. And there's reasons besides courtship to want to go nude. I mean, the air feels good on your skin. The water feels better if you're not dressed in a, a burkini or you know, canvas bodysuit. Or well, how about telling someone that they shouldn't visibly wear lots of expensive gear and flash their cash around a neighborhood where there is a high rate of depression and violent crime? So, and this analogy implies that you tell them not to do those things in that neighborhood rather than improve the neighborhood. So people are out there going, improve our dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> Thunderfoot, by analogy, is just saying, no, just don't flash your cash and carry a gun and act like you're being stalked by a mountain lion. Oh, we, the mountain lion. Classic. Why, why teach them to do that? Why not teach them not to mug people? We do that, and, and I th think we don't really know exactly how to do that better because, of course, people do have criminal parents. So you just working from the outside and then even if the parents aren't criminal you know kids can fall into that and then you're always kind of working from the outside if you're trying to come up with something you could do in school or some program I think um, youth activity centers you know that are kept safe with pools and and uh, billiard tables and ping pong and activities classes um, other things like that the kids can do teaching kids skills that they can use in their actual life to keep their hands busy, you know, skills that, like if a kid learns carpentry and, and likes it, he can use that to do projects in his own time uh, and so on. Um, we do teach that. And you're minimizing it by going, do you just go into school and say, kids don't mug? 
No, that's what fits on a sign. It's like this is like a dissertation on a bumper sticker where you miss the point. You know, like you just take a bumper sticker and just admit, not very detailed. Teach men not to rape. How silly. You know, teach implies there'd be some curriculum of it. What curriculum would that be? Well, we're what, a couple minutes into your video and we've already gone over three, four, five things that are part of the teaching. Like, let me say again, flirting is not a sign of intent to have sex with you. It's a sign that somebody's put their radar scan on you and you're like, maybe it's a tractor beam. Whatever, that's your problem. Want to talk about body language? How about you, mental strength to not be like, oh, I'm getting flirted with. Now I'm confused and the rape was a big misunderstanding. It's just a sexual predilection. I was born this way. I would further add that people have different sexual drives and the idea that you will simply be able to educate people out of their sexuality is unlikely to be successful. Don't believe me? Take a look at all those Christians who decided that homosexuality was wrong, that it was evil, and that all you had to do was to educate people out of it. It was therapy that would help me change. Yeah, you can rewind if you want. I'll put a link to Thunderfoot's video. Thunderfoot just said that trying to lessen rape by educating the source is like trying to lessen homosexuality by trying to educate the source yes he said that he said that rape is just like a sexual predilection and there's nothing you can do about it now even if that were true it doesn't matter we're in a society where if you find yourself with a predilection like that, since it is, harms others, obviously, on a million analytic grounds, you have to treat that like a medical illness. Now, if you have that from uh, evolution, then we would call that a genetic medical illness. Okay, okay education time. From being homosexual to straight. That's how he described it. Yes. He basically said, if you do this what you wouldn't be gay anymore if I did this and worked his therapy program you know, that could perform a miracle and I could no longer be gay irony moment irony moment cuz in reality people like Bachman and her husband actually agree with you Thunderfoot we don't need to fix the inner city just drive real fast when you're there and we don't have to teach rapists not to rape because women should dress modestly because that's what God wants anyway. And by the way, AIDS came from God to punish gays. <laughs> yes, sexual attitudes seem to be pretty deeply biologically ingrained. And I have significant doubts that you will effectively be able to educate people out of them. Well, here's the thing, Mr. Evolutionary Psychologist, um, which is the topic here. I'm not saying that's the science he does. I forget what it is. I, he does something where he spins a lot of chemicals and writes shit down, I think. But the subject he's arguing from here would be evolutionary psychology or evolutionary biology. Well, there is a remnant of the fact that rape is not that uncommon in mammals. So it's not universal in all species but it's not that uncommon and the ambiguous types might even be spread somewhat through all species hard to tell isn't it but it remains in our biology in a legitimate way uh, through aggression healthy sexual aggression like come here you know when both people are into it and uh, perhaps that's cathartic uh, and and present in a lot of people rape is different that's a disease if that's your mental disease and when 90 percent of the rapes I'm just using your statistic I didn't want to go look up a better statistic you said 90 percent I accept your statistic 90 percent of rapes people that you knew Thunderfoot's viewers would have us believe that that's 
uh, people, women that just um, didn't like the sex they had. And so, boom, they want to spend a lot of time at the police station. I agree but they're going to be in that no, situation. No, that's not true. If you train and men increasing... not to grow up to become rapists, you, you prevent think, you rape. Think you can that stop, is the you core think, of You the think problem. you can tell a rapist to stop doing what he's doing? We're, yes, yes. You really, and he's going to listen to yes, a, 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 an organ, ad campaign There are to organizations stop? that do this. Men, stop, men can stop rape. Men stopping violence. They train young men listen. to not rape. A former Boy Scout with movie star looks and charm to match. So I, I've, I'm coming to the conclusion that uh, Thunderfoot is just a, a conscious uh, propagandist, uh, you know, framing things matter, the order. Okay, so yes, that picture that I just stopped at, that's Ted Bundy. That's going to be his first example. So this is the archetype then, boom, rapist, who? Like Ted Bundy. Then after that, he'll mention his 90%. You know, the violent, crazy, serial rapist, that's the smaller percent. The big percent is I was at a, at a frat party, I was at a party, I was at a bar, a guy gave me a drive home. And that's the 90%, but boom, you put this frame in, and then people, most people by the fall, it's just like, okay, now they've got all the frames of Bundy rape, because rape has a lot of different shades and meanings that we're talking about. And it's important to him that when he's saying rape's uneducatable, uneducable, that to, to anybody that we're thinking of Bundy as an example of anybody that might need their ed education. And the sad thing is, is that in fact, mental health care for children, right, special education in how to deal with mental problems that might be... Um, like brain chemistry, biology, for that individual, that would prevent things like Bundy. Someone with those conditions does not have to become so violent. It, 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 there's often uh, some conditions, and, and the fact that they were left alone and had to try to solve their problems on their own and, and instead tried to, you know, ended up making them worse. So even in Bundy, yeah. And that's something where the education in the system, right? Oh, okay, well, I'm going to have to take a break and continue later.